What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's good to see you tonight on the Speak and See show. It's a late night update for you. I just wanted to come across with a note that was put out today, or actually it was uh, in the Senate. When the Senate is open on Sundays, it sometimes is a reason for concern. You should sometimes check it out because what they have to say is it's not normal for them to be out late on a Sunday night in the Senate on the Senate floor. Well, the uh, senator from Utah was speaking tonight and he said something which came across to me as uh, concerning and I'm going to play this for you and I would like to uh, get your thoughts on it if I may um, because we have heard speculation about the idle grants in the, or loans uh, going away literally going into our infrastructure bill that the uh, they're trying to pass right now through the Senate and if that happens, yes, the idle grants would, would pretty much be gone. And we know now that there's a timeline on these idle grants. Uh, we saw that the new, um, coming out this week, they're going to be giving new applications for appeals on the idle grants. Um, so if this goes through, and, and I, I heard today from one of the gentlemen on a comment in the Speakacy Channel that he was saying that the he was asking about the idle grants to a an agent i can't you know neither confirm or deny if this is 100 percent accurate but he said um the agent i asked her about the idle grant and she hung up on me he called back and asked her about the idle, asked him about the idle grant again and they got quiet and then hung up on him <sighs> i wasn't really concerned about the comment too much because i know that the funds are appropriated until the end of the year they're appropriated until December 31st of 2021, which would mean that we're in the clear. But after hearing the Senate today, I'm going to play this for you and uh, and it hopefully gives us a insight on what's going on. Hopefully they're not talking about our idle grants here. I'm gonna play this for you. Um, but uh, many of them pointed out that it's, that it's paid for. And yet when you look at the pay fors, I wonder whether it actually is. Now, some of, the, some of the arguments that they make in saying that it's all paid for rely on things like uh, recapturing COVID monies, uh, COVID uh, funds already appropriated but not yet spent. I suppose that's a good thing to do. If we've got COVID money that we've appropriated but that hasn't been spent, I, I suppose we ought to recapture that and direct it somewhere else. But I'm not That's the part that hit me. COVID money, recapturing COVID money that hasn't been spent. Well, the idle grant money has not been spent. It's still there. And they're trying to say that they can't get people to take it, which we know, as far as you and me are concerned, small businesses, the lower class, uh, middle income, small businesses, for the most part, are those that are saying, yes, we need the money, but they're saying, mm, we're not giving it to you. Uh, so he's saying if it's not spent, yeah, we need to find a place to spend it if, you know, we gave too much into that fund. We know they didn't go give too much into that fund. Uh, so, but when I saw like a little bit later, uh, Schumer interrupted him and there's a, I don't like it when Schumer jumps in because he's a, a middle class killer of small businesses. So I'm going to go ahead and let this play a little further for you. Not sure that that necessarily means that there's no cost or consequence to choosing to spend it here. I mean, if we appropriated more money for COVID than we should have, than we needed to, shouldn't we also consider, I don't know, giving it back to the American people or? My colleague just uh, yield for a minute for a brief interruption. I'll close the Senate, but then allow him to speak. I'd be happy to defer. As long as he should choose. I see he doesn't have many notes, but it's all sui generis. I know that. And I, okay. I'm not sure. I should we generous there, but we'll give, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no comment. Okay, um, Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that when the Senate completes its business today, it adjourn until 12 noon. You know, paying down the debt so that we don't add to the debt as quickly? So he goes over here a little bit more about what, how would, you know, how else can we use this funds? We could pay down the debt. We could do this. I'm going to move my head up here. Maybe it would make a little more sense, actually, if uh, I was just uh, in the picture. But um, it, that right there concerned me. 
when I noticed Schumer was in the room, it, he actually disturbed him a little bit later. I just put it in there just so we could all get a picture because I know a lot of people only watch for a certain amount of time and click out. So I just wanted to get you involved in the inside scoop about this idle grant appropriation, appropriated money that hasn't been spent. Is he talking about our idle grants that have not been spent? We're praying that he's not. And I don't, I've, I, it's not normal. It's not normal for, for them to take money out before it, the end of its appropriation appropriated time, which the idle grants appropriated time is December 31st of 2021. So, but, but we're not dealing with the normal House and Senate right now. We're, we're dealing with uh, something we've never seen, how, how uh, a Congress and, and the Senate is just totally, you know, just going bull rushing the, uh, the floor right now to get their agendas pushed. But that could actually be it could be that he's talking about our idle grants. I'm going to go a little further here and let him uh, continue speaking. I, I think that ought to be on the table as well. So that's part of it is uh, the, the argument that we're taking a big chunk of it from COVID money that's previously been appropriated but not spent. They also rely on a number of other arguments. So let's assume that it's $13 billion from the collection of that. Well. Okay, I'm going to go over to this part right here. He talked about disguising a tax as a fee because we know that the the Democrats said that they would not bring forward any more taxes on the lower to middle class Americans. But if they're adding fees to certain products in the economy, that's basically taxing that we're buying lower income to middle class businesses or buying uh, the fees are basically, he's saying here that it it's being disguised as a tax. So hear this, this is kind of interesting. What that really is, based on my investigation of that. Let me go back a little bit. From the collection of that. Well, rely on a number of other arguments. So let's assume that it's $13 billion from the collection of that. Well, what that really is, based on my investigation of that, they're imposing taxes on the production and distribution of certain chemicals, many of which are used in the production of basically everything, basically all consumer products. So it's listed as a fee, not a tax. Sometimes the distinction between a fee and a tax can be relatively minor and relatively insignificant. Um, but regardless, uh, it's money that ends up being paid for by poor and middle class Americans in the form of higher prices passed down to the consumer on everything that American consumers buy. The biggest difference between this and a tax is that with a tax, there's some record somewhere of, of what the taxpayer is paying. But with a fee that's going into basically every consumer product, in the case of many of these chemicals, it's a backdoor invisible sort of hidden tax. We have to remember, Mr. President, that any time a, a politician, any time an elected official says, you need me, the opposite of, is true. He or she, when saying you need me, is actually saying, I need you. The people aren't here to serve the government. The government exists for the purpose of serving the people. So we've got to be very, very wary of any, anything that sounds like we're telling the people, you need us. You need, you need us to take money from you and to take money from your yet unborn children or for your, from your children who are alive today but not yet old enough to vote <clears throat> and, and spend it in the manner that we deem fit. That's kind of where we're at right now. We are seeing inflation going skyrocket. We are seeing them. It looks like they they have an opportunity to take away an idle loan and grant money from the SBA or pull a lot of it out that has um, been appropriated for you. Um, then now they're looking at taxing, calling it a fee. And now he's also like what we're seeing a lot of the the 
politicians now saying is you need us right now. They're they're trying to make it look like we need them and making it feel like you need them when really they need you. So I'm trying to uh, put this all in one package for you to understand what's going on right now as far as this um, this new infrastructure bill. Um, it's interesting. For that additional reason, we should be extra cautious. As much as I love and, 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 and respect the colleagues who have put together this 2,702-page bill, I, I, I want to go through it to make sure that it spends money in the way that my constituents would like. And I don't think not only he wants to go through it, I want to go through it. You want to go through it. We all want to go through this 2,700 page bill that, that may take away our money. There are parts of the bill where we could say, no, knock that part out. Leave the idle grant and loan money alone. So yes, I do believe that this new infrastructure bill needs to be looked at a lot longer. And uh, we should all have a say in it is what he's trying to say is the people should have a say in it. And which is all the more reason why if it took them four months, shouldn't we really at least take a few weeks with it and, and, and not just a few days? <clears throat> $1.2 trillion. I just put this in there for you all to understand that the significance of the money that they are trying to spend right now of our money, um, the trillions that they're getting into, they're, they're spending trillions like it's going out of style. And But we've got to really understand what a trillion is and what this bill wants to spend. It's easy uh, to, to get caught up in the, the words million, billion, trillion. Sometimes uh, we'll find ourselves um, saying million when we mean billion or billion when we mean trillion or some other combination uh, of, of, uh, of syntactic errors. There is a big difference between them, a thousand-fold difference at, at every level. Remember that a number of people have pointed out recently in order to encapsulate the point, a million seconds will last just 11 and a half days. A billion seconds lasts 31.69 years. A trillion seconds lasts 31,688.74 years. There's an enormous difference here, an enormous difference that we ought to take into account. Sometimes, though we, we can't pass legislation simply because it's bipartisan, we can't be expected to pass it just because some Democrats and some Republicans happen to agree with it. That's actually um, not all that uncommon. From watching the news, sometimes you get the impression that we can't stand each other and that there's such deep-rooted animus across party lines that we can't talk to each other, we don't like each other, and that the problem with Congress is that we can't get anything done because there's partisan gridlock that stops everything. Well, I, I'd offer a different perspective to that, Mr. President. Um, the fact that legislation like this occurs Bipartisanship, the fact that you don't get to be almost $30 trillion in debt without a whole lot of bipartisanship. Every single time we, we add an enormous sum to our national debt, there's bipartisanship behind it. Just because something is bipartisan doesn't mean that it's taking into account the needs of poor and middle class Americans who increasingly of late are being robbed blind by those who, for short-term political gain and praise in the media, will make things more expensive for the poor and middle class, enabling a small handful of wealthy and well-connected interests to benefit from it. When you hear a politician say that the poor and middle class are going to get screwed, you need to, like, Put an ear out if you're a poor or middle class American citizen, especially if you're a small business, because politicians usually don't come out and say you're screwing the poor and middle class. Usually they want to amp it up and say, oh, you're all going to be better off. But this hurts 
the same people that they would be taking away the grants from. The fact that it's bipartisan it shouldn't obscure the problems with it. And I hope we'll have an opportunity to address those problems and that we'll give this legislation the due consideration it deserves. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. That's it for the night, guys. Like and sub. Somebody say Senate hey. Senate stands adjourned until 12 noon tomorrow. Get it to me.